Hi there, Michael Burnett, AF7KB here, and let's talk about calculating power factors. There are a few questions in the question pool that require you to calculate a power factor. We have power factors because of something called reactive power. Put simply, reactive power is the power that's kind of bouncing around inside a circuit that contains reactants. It doesn't disappear. You might say what happens is even stranger. Reactive power is almost a contradiction in terms. It is wattless power. It does no work. It is non-productive. It doesn't even make heat. In an imaginary ideal circuit, it would resonate in the circuit forever, never dissipating. Here are two sine waves, 90 degrees out of phase. We're looking at what's happening in a circuit. We'll say the solid blue wave is voltage, and the dotted red wave is current. Notice how each time the voltage hits maximum positive or negative, the current is at zero. Since power is volts times amps, that gives us zero watts at those moments. There are even large parts of the cycle where the current is positive while the voltage is negative, and vice versa. In fact, when we look at each point of time on that graph and calculate the real power, it comes out something like the bold black line curve on this graph. Now understand, that bold line represents power. And half the time, it's actually negative. It's pushing power back to the source. So when we average it all out, we have no real power in this circuit at all. Let's compare that to what happens when current and voltage are in phase. We'll move these into phase. And this is what happens to power. You can see that at the zero crossings, we'd be multiplying zero volts by zero amps to get zero watts. Yeah, I know, I checked. But other than those moments, we're staying above the zero line with the power graph. We get 100% productive power. By the way, these power curves are fiendishly difficult to draw with a graphics program, so these aren't quite precise. But you get the idea of what's going on. Just don't take them to your electrical engineering professor. At other phase angles, we get more real power and less reactive power. For instance, at 60 degrees of phase angle, it's a 50-50 split between productive power and reactive power. We end up with a power curve something like this. Now, notice in this graph, there are many more points where the voltage and current are cooperating and making real power, so the average is higher than at 90 degrees. We're on the positive side of things, but still less real power than at zero degrees. If we multiply the volts and amps going into the circuit, we get a figure called apparent power. But if we factor in how much of that is trapped in reactive power, that gives us the real power. The ratio of real power to apparent power is called the power factor. And once we know the phase angle, it's easy to calculate that power factor. It's simply power factor equals the cosine of the phase angle. Cosine is a trigonometry term, as is sine, as in sine wave. The power factor will always be a number between 0 and 1. Now, if you're using your trusty TI-30XS calculator, you just press the COS key, C-O-S key, enter the phase angle, let's throw in 30 for an example, and add a parenthesis, press enter, and there's the power factor. Unfortunately, if you did what I just did and just enter, say, 30, 3, 0 for the phase angle, the 30XS will tell you the answer is the square root of 3 over 2, which is perfectly accurate and perfectly useless for the exam. But if you enter the angle as 30.0, like this, It'll tell you the power factor for a 30-degree phase angle is 0 
Uh, you could also use the answer toggle key right down here above the enter key, and it'll toggle back and forth between different forms of the answer. Okay, remember to subscribe to the channel. We add videos often. If you get a chance, drop by the Facebook page and visit the FastTrackHam.com website. Thanks for watching, and 7-3.